Hi, I'm Steve Rosenfeld. I'm a reporter with the Independent Media Institute and I cover voting rights and election technology. And for the past several days, I have been really digging into what are the clues, causes, and consequences of all the different kinds of decisions that led to the meltdown in Georgia and to lesser degrees, similar problems in South Carolina and Nevada all of which had primary elections on Tuesday, June 9. So what did we see or what do we see? Well, if you've seen the news, you've seen all these reports of long lines, hours long waiting, people staying till after midnight to, to vote, poll workers not knowing how to use equipment, reports of equipment breaking down. Okay, okay, but what's really causing all of this? Why did this really happen in Georgia? So what we, have, what we have there is a confluence of different trends where the state, because of the pandemic, tried to shift to voting by mail, but they never planned to do this in advance. And they're also using new voting systems and they're in, at the in-person polling places. So on both of those fronts, the in-person voting and the, and the voting by mail, all kinds of things were happening that were confusing to voters, poll workers, election officials, pretty much everyone except the people at the very top in the state who were giving the orders on, you have to use the machines we just bought for you, you have to follow these rules and procedures that have been written into law and which have been described accurately as leading to all kinds of voter suppression, on and on and on. So this is what we saw combined. So let's get to some examples. Let's start with the vote by mail process. The state decided to mail everybody an absentee ballot application, which means that people had to fill out that application and get it back in on time to then get a ballot. Well, they sent out six point something million applications, roughly one point something million people returned those applications. The state then hired a vendor based in Arizona to send them the absentee ballot. That vendor was slow to print and deliver that ballot, which then had to be sent in the mail to people, which can take an, a week or more. And then they, people had to fill it out and return it. When people weren't getting those ballots in the mail, they thought, oh my, we have to go and vote in person. But when it comes to voting in person, in Georgia, like many places, they were there are fewer in-person voting locations. Why? Well, because of the pandemic. But why? Well, because not only are people anticipating that there'd be more voting by mail, but that there are fewer poll workers to staff those locations. Well, those locations in Georgia um, were not just staffed by people. Not not only did they see, um, you know. Um, an exodus of poll workers. The poll workers that chose to remain not only had to be trained in the social distancing and pandemic health you know, concerns, the state was introducing a brand new voting system. There were new poll books to check people in, which were iPads that had never been used by most poll workers before. And these new so-called ballot marking devices where people touch a computer screen, and then it prints out a summary card of their votes and that has to be taken to a scanner. Well, what was happening yesterday, or rather on Tuesday, was in addition to all these people not getting their ballots in the mail, people were showing up and at these, and there was, these polling locations were understaffed. This is especially in Metro Atlanta, which is four counties and some of the other black epicenters like Albany, and some, some others. All this comes from lawyers committee, hotlines and other phone calls. So they'd show up and what would happen is this. They would present themselves to poll workers who were having a hard time in some cases when there weren't enough of them using these, 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 these iPads to check in people with them um, and see if they were registered voters. It turns out in Georgia, you can't do what you could do in LA, which is look at, at an iPad and see if somebody's on the voter rolls and then, and then say, okay, you're on the rolls, we're gonna cancel your ballot 
your absentee ballot, where to let you vote with a regular ballot. They have to call the county election office and verify with the board of election that every single one of those voters is a legitimate voter. Then, which which takes time, by the way, and they couldn't even get through on the phones to, at times. Then they have to make that voter sign an affidavit that says, I am not voting more than, than once and I am canceling my mail-in ballot. And then they give that voter, they, I, they have to pre-program a special card which gets slid into the ballot marking device to bring up, which is a touchscreen computer. So they have to bring up the right ballot for that voter to then touch. Well, the poll workers, not all the poll workers were even using those cards correctly. They were inserting them upside down into these machines. And then they were saying, oh, the machines are not working. So this is this was happening to thousands of voters, you know, one at a time at a handful of, of polling places in Metro Atlanta and on other places around the, 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 the state. And that, that was only one factor that contributed to these long lines and delays. The state has all these legacy laws that are just crummy. They're technicalities that add up to suppressing the vote. For example, if you are a vote by mail uh, voter, you had to return your absentee ballot either by mail or to a drop box, which they had drop box locations in all the early voting centers. But early voting ended on Friday and under state law, they do not allow you to drop off that ballot at some of the few remaining open polling places. So what are those voters supposed to do? They, they think, well, I can't trust the mail. I don't know where to find the Dropbox. By the way, these Dropbox locations were not widely announced. The information was not readily available. So that also feeds the lines, these kinds of technicalities. So what ends up happening is um, what you saw and heard about. You know, people calling it a complete meltdown, the Secretary of State saying it's not my fault, it's these counties that are inept. Well, one county in particular we took a look at, which is Fulton County, which is one of the Metro Atlanta counties. We had heard from Andrew Miller, an organizer that, you know, that people who are on this website might, you know, know about. Um, she, she's People Demanding Action and, and other groups she's involved with, Center for Common Ground. She was telling people, she was organizing people to write postcards and send texts to thousands and thousands, tens of thousands of Georgia voters with the deadlines to, to how to make sure you are registered and get a ballot and vote. And part of that was having on those cards the phone numbers to call of local election offices, which is generally the smart thing to do so that you take all the middlemen out of the process. No one stands between you and what you need to do to get your vote and count. They weren't answering the phones. Why were they not answering the phones? It turns out for three weeks they had not answer, were not answering the phones because people inside the Fulton County office came down with COVID. They were closed for three weeks starting in mid-April, but they never had anyone else forward the phone calls to people that were working remotely at home. So this, what are we saying here? We're looking at bad laws bad administrative decisions from the bottom up and the top down. We're looking at all these technicalities for voters who cannot get absentee and vote you know, mail-in ballots on time. We're looking at a reliance on out-of-state vendors that add to the time delays involved. We're looking at under-resourced and understaffed in-person voting centers on the actual primary day. And then we're looking at technology that's being used and deployed for the first time by, by poll workers who are afraid to go to trainings because of COVID and don't know how to use it in many cases. And when they, even when they do know how to, do know how to use it, they, um, even, e even when they do know how to use it, they, um, it still requires a lot, you know, this arduous process of literally having to clear every single voter who didn't get their absentee ballot with the county offices who are not even answering the phones before they can let them vote a regular ballot. So this, and there's, there's other details too, was what all came together in Georgia on Tuesday, June 9. Other states had lesser but similar versions of these same issues. South Carolina was also deploying new voting machines. 
and um, they had lines. People weren't familiar with how to use them. They had an online application process. One fellow I spoke to in the state capital county said half of the people who tried to apply to, to get an absentee ballot, which was 12,000 people in Richland County, didn't complete the forms. They thought that they just filled out something online. That was it. They didn't realize they had to print it, sign it, mail it. Where was the public information, the public education? It wasn't there. Go to Nevada. Nevada, the Democrats sued um, and they forced the, the Clark County, which is Las Vegas, to um, mail everyone a ballot. Well, that is a sh that makes the process much more efficient. You don't have to do this whole application nonsense. You get the ballot. And they said we would have not just one, which was ridiculous, but three, which is still ridiculous, um, in-person voting sites for all of Las Vegas on Tuesday, June 9. The last voter who got in the voter who got the last voter in, in Las Vegas ended up voting at three in the morning on Wednesday morning. They got in line just before eight o'clock, thinking they would get there. They had to wait for seven hours. So here again, you have a series of decisions, all of which can, um, what's the right word, become like a feedback, a cascading feedback loop that, you know, says, are we going to fix these problems or are these primaries a preview of what we're going to see in the fall? Now, remember, these are low turnout elections. Primaries tend to be the most motivated and informed voters. Presidential elections are, are the highest turnout elections, which include people who know the least about the process. Look at this backdrop. Look at all these details. Look at all these hurdles and ask yourself, you know, how is this going to work? How is this going to go better, not worse? And that's where we are.